Go ahead, Derek. Yeah, yeah, Coach, uh, Derek Young, K-State Online. Just what are, what are your first uh, reactions to the Kansas State community? I know you've been on the road a little bit, but what are your first days been like as the Kansas State coach? Um, Love. No no other way to say it, love. Uh, open arms, love. I, I, feel, I feel the love for Coach Tang. I feel the love for our program. I feel the love for... Um, all the possibilities that can happen here at K State. Then, secondly, uh, you, you've been on, uh, you know, on social media quite a bit. I think that's kind of your style, and uh, hanging around a lot of famous people. You got any other any other ones up your sleeve? I've seen you take pictures with Drew Brees and Maria Taylor, uh, and spreading the, uh, I guess, Kansas State brands. Probably the purpose of that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm all about endorsing. Um, the brand and the university that I work for. Uh, I have an opportunity to represent such a prestigious university, um, both academically and athletically. And I, I'm never gonna take it for granted. I'm, I'm a kid in the candy store. Uh, I'm not embarrassed by how proud I am to be at K-State. I'm not embarrassed by who I take pictures with. Um, it, it's who I am and what I'm about, you know, even when I'm not on social media. And I asked this to Coach Tang and Coach Malgi already, but what is your kind of, uh, when you're in our living room with the recruit or when they're on a visit, what's your pitch to them and how do you sell them on Kansas State and the school? Uh, first first and foremost, um, I let them know, you know, that we're a faith-based staff that, you know, believe in the higher power of God. Um, and um, also I let them know about the fans, you know, because if, if the fans is showing me love, who can't even – make a layup right now um at, at my age I, I can only imagine what they do when um somebody's dunking the ball or shooting the three from half court so I, I tell the kids and I tell the parents I was like look man I'm a 40 year old I'm out of shape and these people are loving me and I just can't imagine the love they'll show for you thanks coach appreciate it you're welcome next question to Kellis Hey, Coach, Kels Robinette here from the Wichita Eagle and the Kansas City Star. Welcome to Manhattan, and congrats on the job. Um, when you look at uh, replacing all but three scholarship players next season, is that a good challenge to have or a bad challenge to have? I think it's a good challenge. Uh, you know, with my background coming from junior college um, and having to replace players every year or every other year, uh, it's, it's, very, um, it's, it's something that I'm accustomed to. Um, I've done it in my, in my career for a long time. And, um, I've had the opportunity to help rebuild, uh, three programs in my career. Um, one at Slippery Rock, uh, Arkansas State with uh, coach Grant McCaslin and Ross Hodge, and then, um, North Texas. So the challenge is, um, normal for me. And, um, I'm excited about it, man. Cause I mean, I got K-State on my chest now and it, it's, it makes it very intriguing, the kids and their parents and their family and the fan base. I, I just can't stop talking about the fan base, you know, what it means to um, to present that to players. Because once they know people care, and my job is to let them know how much K-State fans care. And I think that helps us build the roster the right way. We're not worried about building it quickly. Um, we're not worried about, you know, making a microwave situation. We want to put it in the oven and put it at 350 and, um, you know, have it baked correctly and, you know, take it out, look at it and put it back in and make sure it's ready to eat when it's time to eat. Well, I guess with, with that in mind, how do you see yourself balancing out bringing in transfers versus high school recruits? How do you uh, get that balance right right now? Oh, <clears throat> with, with Coach Tang's uh, leadership and his experience uh, over 19 years at Baylor, you know, uh, building rosters and keeping guys happy and red shirting guys and, I think some of those blueprints um, will be the same here. Um, we're not, we don't expect to have 13 guys that's playing. That's that's not realistic, you know, at any level. So we, we're looking for some guys that we can bring in and develop over a course of time and build a depth for our program. You know, we're not trying to be a one year uh, flash in the pan. So we're looking to build longevity here. And I also want to ask how, how long have you known Jerome Tang and uh, what what's most excites you about working for him? Man, you know what excites me about working for Coach Tang? Um, it's uh, it's 
it's emotional in a sense because um, he's been such a mentor and a big brother figure to me for the last, since 2007. So, you know, helped me with the map there. But since 2007, he's been a big figure for me. And uh, I'm actually in a different role for the first time in my life with him because uh, this is how unselfish he is as a human being. Uh, for the last 13 to 14 years, he's been my assistant coach on the junior national team um, <laughs> with the U.S. Virgin Islands. So that should tell you the type of um, human being I'm working for and the type of leader I'm working for where he's um, – He's confident within himself and the people that he's with that he's not worried about sitting in a certain chair. So um, I'm excited about it. I, I love him. I love his family. And um, my family love him, too. And he married me and my wife um, in our living room, October 31st, um, 2018. And, you know, he did it. And I was excited. I wanted to get married on Halloween because it's the scariest day in the American calendar. And getting married was the scariest thing for me too. So I just wanted to make it a perfect marriage. Uh, that's great. I've never actually heard of anyone else getting married on Halloween. So yep. I like it. Well, hey, welcome to town, coach. Thank you, man. Uh, next question to Michael. Good morning, Coach Dowling. Michael Goins with GoPowerCat.com. In the short time you've been on the recruiting trail, how has the K-State brand been uh, been uh, accepted from the recruits you've talked to? Uh, it's, it's, it's been accepted very well. Um, but right now it's, it's, um, it's such a weird time with, you know, just the whole transfer portal thing. So you can kind of get, you know, lost in the shuffle because you might call a kid at 9 a.m. and by 12, he's had 25 calls from 25 different schools, you know? So part of, um, my method, you know, wherever I've been is, you know, keeping us relevant because kids always, uh, they're on social media more than they watch TV. They're, they're on social media more than they listen to music. So if they see me having fun here at K-State and they're seeing the fans and the views at 10,000 for, you know, one video that's 10 seconds, like they know that there's a serious fan base here. You know, everything for the kid is viral, viral, viral. And I felt like every video I've put out here at K-State has been viral. If 10,000 is a number, uh, we're, we're doing that in two or three hours, which is impressive. And you mentioned working with uh, Coach McCausland. How does that kind of translate the turnaround you made at uh, North Texas and coming to Kansas State? Uh, I know what it looks like. Um, Coach um, Grant McCaslin and Ross Hodge and Matt Brower, um, I've worked with some really, really good coaches throughout my career there. And I, I know what it looks like. I know what it takes. Um, I know what to demand um, in recruiting, what to look for. And we know it's a process, you know. We, we know it's not a quick fix. And just the whole trial and error uh, working with Grant McCaslin, uh, who came from the Baylor tree, it made it an easy transition for me to come work for Coach Tang because everything we did at North Texas was something to do with Baylor. You know, and myself and Coach Tan, we talk every day on, on the way home after work uh, in my whole career. You know, he, he leaves the office, he calls, and, and we talk. If I miss his call, call him back later on that night. So um, it, it's, it's, it's something that's going to take time, but uh, we're, we're working to get it right. We're working to get it right, and we're not in a rush, and we're not worried about who gets commitment from who and all that. We we want to get the right character people in first um, and the basketball and all that stuff will take care of itself. Thanks, Green. Next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Tim Fitzgerald, 24-7 Sports, gopowercat.com. Uh, as you guys are recruiting, is there a common thread you're looking at in these players? Anything uh, that jumps out to you that you, you need in your program? Uh, intangibles, um, competitiveness. Uh, we're even dissecting it down to um, their body language on film, you know, when they do something good or bad, you know, because um, Coach Tang, I think he said it last night, um, everybody want to be around winners. It's easy to be around people when you're winning. But when you, you know, take a few L's here, you want to make sure that character is still right. So those are those are the kind of guys that we're looking for, you know, that 
you know, still have that positive energy when something might not go right that night for us. And you still want to be around them on a daily basis. So that's what we're doing. Um, everybody, all hands in, everybody, opinion matters here, all the way down to uh, our, our super superstar Bailey um, in administration and operations. Everybody, opinion matters here. We care what everybody thinks. And um, you guys are still a little bit maybe understaffed and trying to do 10,000 things at once. Is, is this kind of daunting for you to have all this on your plate? No, actually, it feels like we have a lot of people here already and everybody's not here. So, you know, um, I know I'm speaking for myself. I'm, you know, I don't come from a big staff, you know. Uh, we come from a place where you wear multiple hats and it's just been the way my whole career has been. So um, when they come, they'll fit right in, you know, because Coach Tang knows what he's doing. He's been dreaming about this moment for 19 years and, um, you know, until then, you know, we're going to push the bus and move this thing forward until they hop on. And you kind of touched this a little bit earlier, but uh, the transfer portals changed this game so much. Um, coming into a new staff and so many guys leaving, needing to fill spots, is it a blessing or a curse to have the transfer portal? Uh, it depends. It, it depends <laughs> on how you look at it. You could lose a really good one in the portal. And you can get a really good one in the portal. So it just depends on what side of the bed you wake up at that morning, you know. Um, but besides that, it's the game is changing. Life is changing. And you got to adapt or get left behind, you know. And we're just we're, – we're, we're going to adapt, but we're going to make sure we do it Coach Tang's way, Kansas State way. We're not going to force anything, you know. We're, we're going to do it the right way. Thank you, Coach. Welcome to K-State. Thank you. Next question to Wyatt. Jareem, welcome to K-State. Uh, I'm the voice of the Wildcats. Uh, been here at, at K-State for, for 20 years. And uh, I guess I have a couple of questions for you. One, just your thoughts on, on coming to the Big 12 and what the conference has done uh, lately here um, and the kind of advantage that that can potentially be. And then you mentioned kind of the K-State thing. In your mind, what is that? What makes K-State special from your perspective? Uh, what makes it special is um, the love, the, the reaction. And trust me, I know there'll, there'll be um, negative thoughts here and there throughout you know, the course of our, our, our tenure here. And um, that's just life. But all I can see is the positive. You know, I can't see negative. I, all I see is positive. I see positive people at the gas station. I see positive people at the restaurant. Um, I, I made a joke last night, and I want people to know this. I'm very um, outgoing. I, I have a good sense of humor. At least I think. My wife doesn't think so. But <laughs> I feel as though I have a great sense of humor. And uh, I, I was just playing with you know, these guys that we met last night at uh i think it's Hooli Hooli hooligans um, hands. yeah hooligans yeah. and um you know they were excited because i guess they saw me on social media so i i just put them up and then i teased them and i said um these guys interrupted our meal even though we were done eating we, we were finished and uh i said they didn't even pay the bill i felt lol next thing you know the bill comes and this it, they paid it and that was not like it was just a joke so i gotta get people to understand my humor it's it's I don't I don't want people to pay the bill I just want them to enjoy the laugh you know because there's so many negative content out there and I, if I could make somebody laugh for five seconds I, I've done my job that guy by the way is Tim Engel's friend um that, that was a pretty good piece I saw that on uh, Twitter last night and, and as from the big 12 what advantage is that to sell that to young people? What what has been done lately at places like Kansas and Baylor and Texas Tech and and others? I'm I'm trying to think, but if I'm like off the top of my head, um, it's probably four or five Hall of Fame coaches right now in the Big Twelve that are currently coaching, and it's probably six future Hall of Famers in the Big 12, okay? And uh, the brand of the Big 12 is is legit. It's it says, um, 
it's as flashy as rappers. It's cool as a country singer. <laughs> um, and um, it's 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 a brand that no matter where you go, it, it's, it speaks volume, whether you're overseas or, you know, in a small town, like the Big 12 speaks names for its value for itself. And, and the players like it. And when we call players, you know, we don't only tell them about K-State. We talk about coming to the best conference in college basketball. Well, thanks. And uh, again, welcome to K-State. Looking forward to working with you. All right. Thank you. Tim, did you have something else or you just forget to lower your hands? No, I suck at lowering my hand. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, next question to Zach. Hey, Coach, uh, Zach DeLoach with the uh, Manhattan Mercury. Um, what's kind of your personality as a coach um, like on the practice floor, on the game floor? Energy, 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 energy. Um, whatever it takes to be successful. I, I can be quiet. I can be the biggest clapper. I could, I could mop the floor um, if need be. Uh, I'm, I'm never going to ask anybody to do something that I can't do myself. And um, that's how Coach Tang is. That's how he's always been. And um, that's that's my motto. Whatever coach needs me to do, whatever the team needs me to do. Um, Grant McCaslin taught me over the last six years, it's about winning. You know, it's about winning. So I, I don't care who gets the credit. Um, as long as we get that W, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Um, making copies, going to get coffee. It, it doesn't matter, you know. But if I'm going to get somebody's coffee, I think I'm going to need some gas money because gas prices is high. And uh, what do you see as, as the biggest challenge here at K-State? And then what is uh, the, the biggest asset K-State has to overcome that? Whew. Biggest challenge, man. I, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't see any biggest challenge, man. I, I see love. I see support from my administration. I see people doing whatever it takes to, to help us be successful the right way, uh, from compliance to – um, uh, AD, uh, I just, I just feel that everybody's a, a touch, a text away from helping do whatever it needs to be done for us to be successful. And again, the fans allow this to be something magical in the making. Thank you. Go back to Derek. Thanks coach. Derek Young, K-State Online. Uh, Going back to recruiting, is there one or two things, and I know you guys need a lot because of the voids, but is there a certain thing that you're really looking forward to prioritize in the next few weeks? Uh, really good guard play to go, go along with Keith. you know, really good guard play, you know, to have um, multiple guys that can handle dribble, pass, and shoot. And um, that's really, really important. And then, you know, Having a, a mobile big, you know, that can guard ball screens, that can catch lobs, you know, and that can run the floor, you know, because, uh, you know, having good guard play means that you're going to have options and you're going to be able to go out and get out and transition because you're going to have multiple guys capable of bringing the ball up the floor. And you need bigs that can move and, you know, get from one end to the next end in, in, in seconds. And I know you've worn a lot of different hats throughout your career. Is there a a phase that you're more comfortable with more than the other, whether it's offense or defense or anything of that nature? Uh, more, more the defensive side. Um, I, I've been able to learn a lot from um, Ross Hodge, the associate head coach at, um, at North Texas. And, you know, his attention to details uh, with the defense had us being the number one defense scoring defense in the country this year at North Texas. So, uh, just the particulars and the, the, the preciseness that he coached with every day um, is something that I'm excited about bringing here to K-State and, you know, um, helping our staff uh, establish with our players. Thanks again, Jareem. Welcome to Manhattan. Thank you. Any other questions for Coach? Coach, if you hold on one second, we'll give you